Okay, so the first thing you're going to do once your uh, printer is turned on, you'll see the screen here. Um, so we're going to do bed leveling first. So um, insert your SD card, the one that came with your printer. If you're using this Flash Forge, I'm just going to show you how you do it on this one real quick. Uh, and click print from SD. And the top thing is going to be plate leveling.x3g. Um, so we're going to do that now. It's going to give us a couple of prompts, which I'm just going to skip through. And then the bed is going to start rising up. Okay, so once your bed has reached the top, you'll see the nozzles uh, come down to touch the bed pretty much. Um, I've actually got some previous ex uh, extrusion sitting on uh, on that left extruder there, which is the one I'm going to use. So I'm just going to quickly get that off and then continue with the video. Okay, so the Flash Forge comes with this handy piece of paper, um, patented piece of paper, which is basically just a regular old piece of paper that you slip between the nozzles uh, to find out how close they are. It's just a feeler gauge, essentially. So I'm going to uh, slide this in between both the nozzles. Uh, the one I'm using is the left hand side, but you want to make sure that both are pretty much good. Uh, you want it to slide pretty nicely through with a, just a touch of friction. It's basically impossible for me to um, translate how this feels to you in a video, but um, I've got a pretty good idea of how it should feel now. Um, so just a touch of friction is good. You don't, don't want it to be too low or um, it's going to uh, smear you, the, the print as it prints. You don't want it to be too high or it's going to look all wobbly. Um, each layer is going to come out all wobbly looking. So that's good. So I'm just going to press the OK button and it's going to move to the next point it wants to test. So I've noticed this one's a little bit uh, tight. So underneath um, there's these things here. Um, you want to turn them if, if it's if it's if it's too close to the board, you want to tighten them. So you want to turn them to the right as if you were looking at them from underneath uh, or clockwise. And if um, uh, and if they're too high, you want to loosen them. So the spring is loosened up, so it pushes the board up. So this one I want to tighten just a fraction. Yep, that's good. And we're going to move to the next one. All right. Ooh. All right, final side. Just a touch tight. All right, that's good. So if we press OK again, it's going to move the uh, head to the center of the bed. And we're just going to feel that. Check that it feels OK. That feels pretty good to me. All right, and we press OK, and it's just going to drop the bed back down. Okay, so with the bed leveled, uh, we're pretty much ready to print. So back from the main, uh, back to the main menu, uh, print from SD card, um, and any fresh prints that you've loaded onto the SD card are actually uh, at the bottom. Um, so um, I'm printing uh, one that I've printed before. This is going to be an ABS, and it's going to print from the left extruder. Um, so with the little arrow over it, you'll see there. It means it's got that one selected. So I'm going to click OK and we're going to start printing. And uh, while it's heating up and the bed is moving into place, I'll just point out a couple of other things. If you press the uh, left or the right button on the menu here, you can actually go to this menu here, uh, which will allow you to select a couple of different options. The most important thing that you might want to um, have a look at, if this is one of your first prints, you might want to actually change the speed. So um, you can click that and then it's just a percentage basically. So you can drop it down to 80% to start with and then adjust on the fly um, after that. So if it's your first print and you're not sure if it can handle being at 100% speed, maybe just drop it down to 80 and work up from there. Uh, if you're printing in PLA, you'll want to hit OK on this and it's going to turn the cooling fan on for the filament. Uh, this is important with PLA because you want uh, it to be rapidly cooled as it's printed. Otherwise, it's going to like bubble and stay hot for too long and it's going to get all, all gross looking basically. Uh, but with ABS, you want your printer to be completely enclosed. Uh, make sure the little door on the front's shut. Uh, make sure the hood is on the top. 
and um, and make sure your the space in which you're printing in is that is at a regulated temperature. It's not the temperature is not going up and down, and um, and you're pretty much good to go. Okay, so the 3D print has just finished. Um, I've got myself here a, uh, get it in the shot, it's a, it's a paint uh, scraper. You can get this from any old hardware shop. Um, it's handy to have one that's got kind of a sharp edge. They tend to get a little bit more expensive the sharper the edge is. Um, so if you're smart and you have access to the tool, um, just buy a cheap one and then run it against the linisher and you can sharpen it up just nicely. Um, so now I'm going to scrape this off the bed. It's going to be a little bit stuck by the look of it, but um, it should come up once I get it under there. There it is. <clears throat> and as you can see, uh, fresh off the thing, um, I'm going to pull all the all the bits and uh, all the bits of. Um, of the base off um, and the supports off and then I'll get you a better look at him uh, and actually while on the topic of um, removing supports um, having a pair of uh, pliers uh, just a needle nose pliers is quite useful um, and also for this one here because he's got the supports inside his mouth uh, it's useful to have a sharp scalpel um, you need to be very careful obviously because these will cut you real good. Um, I work with hand tools on a daily basis, so I'm pretty used to it. So if you're not confident, maybe stay clear of them until you've got a little bit more confident uh, getting into tough areas. But um, yeah, if you're using it, just be careful, obviously. Okay, and as you can see here, this is the finished print. Um, and I got it at my first go. Um, that would not be the truth. <laughs> um, this was my first attempt. And um, what I'd like to point out here is um, there's some gaps um, starting from where the layer starts. So, uh, so you can see where that seam there is on the just to the left of the tongue. Um, there's some sort of like layer separation occurring, and then it gets better and better and better, and then it's um, then it's all good once you get to the other side, and then it starts again when it goes up a layer. So that's that was the first one. Uh, so I fiddled around with a couple of different things. Um, I tried increasing the um, the extrusion amount uh, at this and on restart. Um, I'll show you that now in um, in a MakerBot uh, desktop. But um, this was a result of that, um, which is quite a bit better. Um, I also to solve the problem uh, increase the amount of shells. So you can see that. Um, Basically, I'll try and get that in focus. That's basically perfect. I haven't cleaned it up perfectly, but um, but I was actually getting some over extrusion on the underside of his tongue there, um, and also you will see I was getting some over extrusion on his ears, and they were getting a bit too blobby. So um, that was the second attempt. Um, so the third attempt, um, which I just finished printing. Um, is that one there and you can see that the ears are still a bit blobby but um, the issue with um, with over extrusion uh, on the tongue is almost gone um, it's pretty good it's not perfect I could probably do to have some supports there still having problems with the uh, ears being over extruded but that may actually be a bed leveling uh, problem I think um, or possibly a temperature problem because um, it looks like the the nozzles dragging across the ears as it's printing those parts also I might just be a bit hopeful to want to print um, ears like that because they're quite small um, and they just go straight up unsupported uh, which is quite a difficult thing to print so there's those three there um, also I wanted to show you a couple of other prints that I've done uh, so as you can see I've printed a lot of these guys um, they have actually been my test print for um, for all the new settings that I've been trying throughout it. You can see I've made this one with a porthole on the bottom. 
um, and he's been working out really good. That's been a really easy print to do. And you'll see that the um, his horns actually print up really nicely. So um, I'm not sure why I'm having so much problems with the bunny ears, but um, I will continue to try. I think it could be because they're on a 45 almost degree angle, um, which makes it difficult. And then we've got this bad boy here. Um, you might recognize him from some of my other tutorials. Um, he's actually printed up pretty nicely. I was actually getting a little bit of layer separation on his back here, um, which I think I will fix by uh, increasing the number of shells, but otherwise it's a pretty decent print. All the details came up really nicely. Um, the only problem I had was that I kept breaking his teeth off when I um, pulled out all the um, supports in his mouth um, and I actually broke his tongue off, so I've had to glue those back on. But um, otherwise he's come up really nicely and he stands freely, which is pretty cool. Um, he has a baby brother as well, um, which was my test one, like I said, when you're printing something new. Print it small, um, but yeah, I've actually done tons of other prints as well, but I've I've given most of them away because I had some family pr uh, visiting recently. Um, so that is gonna happen when you're printing out lots of little toys that you're gonna end up giving them away. Uh, but that pretty much sums up a very basic method of going from ZBrush to uh, to a 3D printer and printing out your own models. Uh, this is one way of doing it obviously and it's not perfect and I don't claim to be a 3D printing expert. I'm fairly new to it. I've only been doing it for a few months but um, these these are the this is the way that I've been doing it that I've found, found to work and hopefully um, any other ZBrush users out there that want to get into 3D printing that have perhaps purchased a 3D printer or maybe you're even looking at something like Shapeways, um, you can use this tutorial uh, to your benefit. So yeah, if you've liked this tutorial, give it a like though so other people can find it. Um, subscribe to my channel if you're interested in all things 3D. I do a lot of stuff on uh, Renderman and ZBrush and Maya as well. Um, check out my channel if you want to see more uh, and subscribe. But um, yeah, until next time, happy 3D printing.